I shudder at the thought of it. My freedom, he bought it with what ought to be my allotted death. Consequences. Sin is a monolith, networked together. The model is, in the garden, failure to uphold God's law. Me and Adam and Eve ate the fruit, and garden again, when graves into gardens became the paradigm. When the restoration of death and darkness is light and beauty, through the void of death, the spirit has transcended. I became a believer. I felt the breath. And every time he speaks to me, I feel a fire in my chest. And still, I traded my savior's life for 30 pieces of silver. I denied him three times right in front of him. And I spat on him and I strung him up. And acting as the cosmic mediator on the cosmic cross, he still asked God to forgive me, being well aware of the cost. But if the devil offered me a kingdom, maybe I'd take it. After all, for quite some time now, I've been moving near it, thinking I can make sense of my life with my senses and not my spirit. No, I didn't personally murder or whip or laugh at you, but I was no better than those who did. And then you were standing right in front of me, three days after you died, and I looked you in the eyes. I had to admit, guilt, shame, and regret flooded my veins. It was all true, everything you said. You did come, die, and rise again. And when your disciples saw you alive again, standing right in front of them, what was it like? I can only imagine. I think we're all like the women who brought spices to his tomb. And the angel said, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? The Easter answer wasn't 2,021 years ago because time means nothing to the one who strokes the brush. Why would I look for joy in this world? Why would I let it tear me down? This place and time that has exiled me is not where my hope is found. God the Father, Abba Yahweh Elohim, hemmed the long history of human suffering, erased the downward trotting reality to which we were hustling, and somewhere between designing distant celestial bodies or the tiniest pieces of DNA, he found it worthwhile to sacrifice his son for my debt to pay. Heavenly Father, never let me reduce that cross to just a fashion state or a blatant spiritual symbol that brings me lukewarm amazement. And if I become the Laodicean, neither hot nor cold, remind me of the time I shouted Hosanna in the highest just a few days before I yelled crucify him. Remind me what has happened here. And when the Pharisee disputed Jesus' Messiahship, Jesus replied with the revelation, even the stones will shout. So praise should flow from our very bones. All creation sings to his glory. And in recognition of the fact that we are image bearers, how much more light than a stone should we reflect back to him? Honor him for the blessings that rain down from heaven. Transpose them into praise and worship reflected back to him. It is the recognition of his mission, the continuance of his vision. Save humanity by literally saving humanity. Christianity is not theoretical. Love is not theoretical, because, because it isn't theoretical how much light poured down from heaven in cosmic matrimony when Jesus Christ laid down his life for mine. We became the undying church, his everlasting bride. We gained the privilege to stare in death's eye, rise above death's grip and stride. We've got nothing but time. You can hurt my body, you can take every worldly thing from me, but I promise you this, I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living, and I have seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. My groom's ultimate sacrifice has already written my future into being. I'm at the marriage feast, seeing and believing. Death has no jurisdiction here. The grave means nothing to me, because I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun exponentially. My God, he is the city of refuge, stronghold, rock, altar, cornerstone, home. He is the day star guiding the vessel of mercy, the bread of life, the water of salvation, the head of the nation. He is the ladder which lets us rise from this earth and bask in his presence. He is the surety who promised us, gifted us, paid the debt for our salvation, who has pledged us to set before his father's throne forever. And as I sit, unsure, staring in the face of cultural injustice, oppression, depression, and disunity, I am ever grateful for my suffering servant who fervently suffers it with me. That's God my Father, who I pray you'll know. Not the judge, the punisher, the tyrant, but the one who loves vibrant and lives 